watching out for you. This is Newswatch 12 at 6. It may not be feeling much like fall in our region right now, but we've got some fall football going on tonight. Thanks for joining us for News Watch 12 at 6. I'm Haley Gravid. Stormwatch 12 Chief Meteorologist Matt Hoffman joining us live at Phoenix High, where tonight the Pirates are taking on North Valley at home. Matt, what are conditions looking like for us? Well, Haley, actually, things have just kicked off here. They're starting the game early today at 6 because it's homecoming for the Phoenix Pirates. And, uh, of course, be sure to tune into the Friday Night Blitz tonight for highlights. Uh, but the weather out here, quite nice. There's a nice breeze right now. We have clear skies in Phoenix. They're taking on uh, the North Valley Knights. Let's take a look at current conditions around the region. We're still tracking some pretty gusty winds, and that's creating critical fire weather conditions over on the east side. Uh, we've seen mainly clear skies across the region today. The wet weather staying well to the north. Let's take a look at the red flag warning that we have in place until 8 o'clock tonight for the east side, but also for the Rogue Valley. All of these red flag warnings go until 8 p.m. The combination of gusty winds, very low humidity will create critical fire weather conditions. Here's a look at what we're expecting. A gust up to 25 miles per hour in the Rogue Valley and east side gusts 30 to 50 miles per hour. We've definitely been seeing that throughout the afternoon. Humidity is very low in some cases down into the teens and uh, that can allow fires to spread quick. Here's a look at the forecast for this game here between the Pirates and the Knights. Uh, kickoff is at 6 but by about 7 o'clock we'll be into the lower 70s. Still a little bit breezy but winds will be dying down. Tomorrow we're going to see a cool start in the morning but warm conditions in the afternoon. Winds won't be as gusty. We're going to keep that warm trend going. Highs tomorrow running about 10 degrees above average in both Medford and Klamath Falls, up to 87 in Medford and 81 in Klamath Falls. Coming up in a bit, we'll take a closer look at your weekend forecast for Southern Oregon and Northern California. Uh, but for now, Haley, we'll send it right back to you in the studio. Matt, thank you. And new at six tonight, a man has been sentenced to 10 years in prison after killing his mother. 30 year old Matthew Winder pled guilty this afternoon to first degree manslaughter on May 12th of 2023. Winder stabbed his mother, Cheryl Lynn Sellers, after an argument at her home in Phoenix. Winder then called 911 to report that he killed his mother and then returned to the scene where he was arrested. Looking at a health watch for us this evening, school has been canceled for Monday at Henley Elementary in Klamath Falls after an illness outbreak impacted students and staff. News Watch 12's Rocky Walker has more. In the last 24 hours, we began to see that there were a number of students who were falling ill. And then this morning, there was a great awareness for the fact that there were more students than there were yesterday. I'm currently at the Henley Complex. This is where Henley Elementary School, as well as Henley Junior and Senior High Schools are located. And today, about 200 students of Henley Elementary School called out sick. This is what prompted the Public Health Department, as well as the school district, to close down Henley Elementary School for Monday. Originally, they were citing this as being neurovirus, uh, but they are saying that without official testing, they're just labeling it as a gastrointestinal illness. Until we've gotten a stool sample and able to have that tested, we can't say definitively that it's norovirus, but when you have a number of individuals who are reporting vomiting and diarrhea, the assumption is that it's norovirus. The reason for a three day weekend such as this is because of gastrointestinal illnesses such as norovirus, they take about three days to fully run their course. So they're hoping that students who are ill will be able to come back to school on Tuesday uh, healthy and not spreading any illness to other students. This isn't a promise that your child is going to get norovirus. It's an opportunity for us all to be as healthy as we can be. As far as the public health department and the school district know, this is an isolated incident at Henley Elementary School and nobody from Henley Junior or Senior High School has reported catching a gastrointestinal illness. They're saying that this is so the community is as healthy as it can be as we move into the upcoming school week. 
The Klamath County Public Health Department told me that ways to make sure that you and your family are safe and healthy is to make sure to wash your hands, sanitize your surfaces, especially if you are cooking, avoid cross contamination. And if somebody within your household is sick, make sure they're using a separate bathroom than the rest of the household. But if you're not able to do that, make sure that sanitation and cleanliness is at the top of your mind to stop the spread of any illnesses. In Klamath Falls, Rocky Walker, News Watch 12. And onto the fire watch early this afternoon in Ashland, a delivery truck caused a significant disruption when it clipped a power line leading to a power outage and a small fire. News Watch 12 was on scene just after the fire was put out. The incident occurred near Ashton Community Hospital when the truck damaged a power line, collapsing a nearby power pole. It caused an outage, but also set a fire in the yard of a nearby home, which was quickly contained by Ashland firefighters. Asante Community Hospital lost power, but it was quickly restored with the generator and no patients were affected. A delivery truck was pulling around the backside of Ashland Community Hospital and apparently clipped uh, a line that was hanging down and uh, that line ended up pulling down and breaking a power pole. The power outage affected multiple homes and businesses in the area, disrupting services and causing concern among residents. Chambers emphasized that restoration efforts are already underway, with crews working diligently to access the damage and repair the broken pole. And fire crews now investigating after a structure fire broke out in Cave Junction this morning. Red Cross has been activated for the three people who lived in the house. All three made it out unharmed, but their five dogs did not survive. Firefighters with the Illinois Valley Fire District, Rural Metro Fire, AMR, and ODF Southwest all responded to that fire. Also on the fire watch, Medford declaring October 5th through the 12th as Fire Prevention Week. Newswatch 12's Luke Doton shows us how to stay fire safe. Newswatch 12 has been covering new fires almost every day this week. This Friday morning, I was at a house fire in rural White City. Earlier, Newswatch 12 was at a house fire in Medford that shows the importance of one tiny device. These closet doors next to me, they are charred, they are burnt, they are broken. But the crazy part about this story is that the entire house behind me could have looked like these doors, except there was a working smoke detector that got the family up and out of there before they could get hurt and allowed the fire department to respond fast. The city of Medford is declaring October 5th through 12th as Fire Prevention Week. The theme is smoke alarms, making them work for you. The idea is that if you're asleep at night, like what is going to wake you up in the middle of the night when you are out cold, right? That smoke alarm. Um... At the open houses this week, they'll have demonstrations. Plus, you'll get a chance to see where firefighters live and work. You'll also be able to interact with them as normal people instead of on-duty emergency responders, which is a rare opportunity. Medford Fire, Hearts for Seniors, and the Red Cross Cascades region are also teaming up to give out and install smoke alarms for free. If you sign up at the open houses, they'll come by and install a smoke alarm on Friday the 11th. In Medford, Luke Doton, Newswatch 12. Looking at some sports coverage tonight, the Oregon Ducks are taking on the Michigan State Spartans tonight at Autzen Stadium. Newswatch 12 Sports' Madison Marie has the latest from Eugene. Game day here at Autzen Stadium. The number six Oregon Ducks hosting Michigan State on a Friday night for some Big Ten football. Oregon rocking their heroes uniform in honor of all cancer victims while also facing a familiar foe in Jonathan Smith on the other sideline who is now the head coach of Michigan. Highlights coming up tonight reporting live from Autzen Stadium, Madison Marie. And the Big Ten game is also bringing the big bucks into the region. Julio Moore Rodriguez examines the economic impact that this new Big Ten fans will be bringing on to Eugene. The new fans are making event planners and organizers adjust. Scott Azig, a pre-game event organizer, says this year he is hosting 500 Michigan State alumni. In the past, Izig would only get half of that, but the Big Ten and its large fan bases are already making their presence known. Um, it, it just uh, it adds a lot to the community to have those extra people, especially the tourists here. 
More crowds means more money to spend on local businesses in Eugene and Lane County. The crowds also have an impact on the hotel market in Eugene. Travel Lane County officials told me hotels have always been tricky to come by if you don't plan in advance. They don't expect that to change, but they also told me more hotels are on the way, which will help visitors by giving them more options in the market. One of the things we're starting to see is um, some hotel rooms coming back online with Valley River in reopening. So that's uh, great timing for this coming season. Uh, we're about to see the opening of the Town Place Suites uh, next to Valley River Inn, which is another 100 rooms which will come into the market. According to our local tourism experts, these new fans are very well traveled. And so the economic impact, um, I think, will be bigger uh, as we get you know, rolling with this new conference. Next Saturday, another Big Ten team, Ohio State, is going to come to town and they're expected to bring their fans as well. Reporting in Eugene, Julio Mar Rodriguez, back to you. And a follow-up, Pickleball Heights is now open for indoor play in Central Point. Newswatch 12 took you onto the courts this week for a preview and attended today's ribbon cutting. Local pickleball players say they now can play all year long with the comfort of an indoor space. Such a great sport for people who are um, maybe were into tennis or racquetball or, or on other racket sports and just physically can't do that anymore. This is a great option because you don't have to run as much, you know, it's a little, e a little easier and it still takes a lot of skills. So. The venue offers lessons, chances for team play and a dink wall to practice solo. If you'd like to sign up for a session at Pickleball Heights, the link is on our website, kdrv.com. And our Coats for Kids campaign has been going on for one week now, and we've already seen some action from you, our viewers. Newswatch 12 has already been working to empty some of the red barrels that are already filled with coats. Newswatch 12 is working with our partners and you at home to provide new and gently used children's coats. We have more than 50 donation barrels in Jackson, Josephine, and Klamath counties. You can also make a financial donation to our Coats for Kids campaign. You can do that by sending a check to our street address seen here on your screen or making an online donation. Information for both can be found on our website, kdrv.com. We want to thank you for keeping this annual tradition alive for local kids.